You know that feeling when you play War Thunder, and it feels like something doesn't quite match up, and your FPS is really low? Well, forget that. After following all the steps in this video, you can finally enjoy super smooth and responsive gameplay with the highest FPS possible in War Thunder. Let's get straight to it. First, make sure to download the folder with all the files you will need to follow along. Once you download the folder, extract it, and move it to your C drive. Before doing anything, let's make a few important checks. First, check your RAM speed, and see if it runs at its maximum speed. It's very important to be running on XMP, and if it doesn't, you are probably losing a lot of performance on War Thunder. If you don't know how to make your RAM run at full speed, no worries, I will show you exactly how to do it later when we'll optimize your BIOS settings. Next, go ahead and do a quick stress test on your CPU to see if there are any overheating issues. It's crucial that your CPU doesn't get very hot when you play War Thunder because that means it will downclock itself to cool down. For best results, you should leave this for at least 5 to 10 minutes, but a quick 1 to 2 minute test should give you an idea of what's happening. If your CPU temperature is under, let's say, 75, you shouldn't be worried. But if you see any instant spikes to over 80s or close to 90s, you will have to check what's going on and fix it as soon as possible. If your CPU is overheating, you can never play at maximum FPS on War Thunder. It will always be underperforming because it automatically lowers the clock speed to try to lower the temperatures. Once you are done with the test, it's time to go ahead and install some basic stuff like DirectX and C++ redistributables. All games and apps, including War Thunder, use these. Even if you already have them installed on your PC, it's a good practice to reinstall them to get the latest updates and fix any corrupted files. Apart from that, while these are being installed, make sure to go ahead and do all the Windows updates available. Once all Windows updates are done, go ahead and pause Windows updates for as long as possible. What I personally do with Windows updates, is I pause them for a let's say 2 to 3 months, then do everything that's available, redo everything on this video, and pause them again. This way, my PC always feels fast and responsive. Once everything is installed, we are ready to start optimizing your PC to boost FPS in War Thunder and generally every single game that you play. First let's start with your Windows Power Plan. Just run the PP file, and it will automatically import and enable the highest performance power plan for Windows. The registry file will automatically optimize, update, enable, or disable every single Windows setting that makes sense for performance. You can take a look by yourself, and if you are familiar with Windows registry, you can edit it for your preferences. This is literally everything that will have an effect on performance while skipping everything placebo or useless. It will not break your PC in any way, and everything will be functional including Xbox Store, Windows apps, etc. Just double-click on it, and press OK and you are good to go. Next, let's clean up your cache, junk, and temporary files. I've made a few shortcuts to make everything easier and quicker. On each folder, select everything by pressing Ctrl plus A, and hit Delete. Once everything is deleted, go to your disks and do a cleanup on each of them. This way, sometimes you can clean a lot of disk space, especially if you are using other software and games except War Thunder. Next, let's set up ISLC. This program will help a little with latency and always clear up cached RAM. Set up the settings like mine with the only difference on the option called, free memory is lower than. There you should add half of your RAM multiplied by 1024. If you have 16 GB of RAM, then the new, BUR should be 8 times 1024 equals 8192. PC.CMD will rebuild your performance counters. Just double click on it and press any key to continue. Next, go ahead and run auto runs. It will help you disable services and apps that start with your PC every time it boots. Make sure to uncheck everything that you don't need. If some software is not working properly or opening after restarting your PC, just come back here and check the related item. Once you uncheck all the unneeded services, go ahead and close auto runs. Make sure to not disable anything related to War Thunder. Let's move on to the GPU folder. What we will do now is completely uninstall your GPU driver and then reinstall a new one. By uninstalling your GPU driver using DDU, you ensure there are no leftovers or corrupted files that could mess up with War Thunder and cause low FPS, stuttering, and unstable performance. This process is recommended in Windows Safe Mode, but I will do it like this for the video. You can do it in a normal Windows environment, but it's better in Safe Mode. Once you open Display Driver Uninstaller, choose your GPU, and click Clean and Restart. Once your PC restarts, download the latest driver for your GPU. 
Go to either NVIDIA's or AMD's official websites by searching it on Google, choose your exact GPU model, and download the latest graphics card driver for your operating system. When downloading GPU drivers, you can always check each driver's update notes and see if something specific is mentioned for War Thunder. If something positive is said about War Thunder on a particular driver version, I prefer that one. If it's something bad, then avoid the driver version. Once you download it, go ahead and install the driver and proceed with the on-screen instructions. Once you've installed the driver here are the best NVIDIA settings for War Thunder as well as the best AMD settings for War Thunder. Copy them and then make sure to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on your Windows say, Tings. The next step is to disable audio enhancements. This will not help boost your FPS in War Thunder directly, but it will fix stuttering and freezes for many of you. There is almost zero effect on how you hear things inside War Thunder unless you have any special effects like bass boosting enabled. You can always return and enable them if you feel your sound changed drastically in the game. Now, we are heading to the final part of this quest to boost your FPS in War Thunder. Last but not least is the BIOS settings. Getting them right is essential, a few will dramatically increase your FPS in War Thunder. Before we get into the best BIOS settings, let's ensure your BIOS is updated and running on the latest version. On your Windows search bar, type system information, click on it, and locate your motherboard model. Click on it, and press Ctrl plus C, to copy it. Open your browser and type your motherboard model and navigate to the official website. Look for a support or drivers tab, click on it, and choose BIOS. Find the latest BIOS update for your motherboard and download it. Once it's downloaded, extract the zip file, plug it into a USB drive, and move the files into your USB. If you don't have a USB drive, you can create a small partition and use it as a USB drive. Once you are done updating your BIOS to the latest version, it's time to optimize it to boost your FPS in War Thunder and generally make your PC perform at its best. If you are on an AMD system, then make sure to adjust the following settings. Enable XMP to make your RAM run at maximum speed. Next, enable Precision Boost Overdrive. This will make sure your CPU works at maximum speed. Also, enable Resize Bar Support. These are the most impactful settings you can quickly change on any AMD system to improve your performance on War Thunder significantly. Next, we have those on an Intel system. Again, enable XMP or DOCP to boost your RAM speed. Disable the following settings, Intel Speed Step, Intel Speed Shift Technology, and Intel C States. Enable Turbo Mode and Resize Bar Support. Again, these are the most impactful settings for any Intel system to boost FPS and make your CPU and RAM run optimally. Of course, you can optimize them further by overclocking and undervolting your CPU and RAM, going further down the line with BIOS settings, but we won't go in depth in this video. If you followed the video and did everything as suggested, congratulations, your PC is running at least 95% of its potential. Your FPS and War Thunder should be at the highest they've ever been, and your PC and gameplay should be smooth as butter. That's it for this video, boys, and the one girl watching this. Let me know the increased difference in FPS you got on War Thunder or if you need help or suggestions. Have a beautiful day.